Good morning, saints. Here in the sanctuary and virtually. Can you hear me? I am have started a journal. And every morning I make myself conscious to write down what's going on in my life. This morning I'm writing that this is the day, come on, that the Lord has made. What am I going to do? I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to lift up my head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And when we open the doors, the King of glory shall come in. I might have to ask somebody, who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong in might. He is the King of glory. So, as a result, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. He promised it, he'll do it. Because he does what he says. What the Lord God says is so. Well, beloved, since we're on such a high note starting this morning, let us continue in that vein. Let the world know that we have come as the body of Christ to do what? To do holy business for our King. Yes, we come in troubled times. But we have high spirits. Why is that? Because we know, we know the eternal one is still on the throne. Again, I ask you saints, lift up holy hands. During the course of this worship, lift high your voices and praise the sovereign one. For mighty is our God, holy are his judgments, and he is all together lovely. Whatever else you came to do, forget about it. Just praise him. Praise him. Praise him. For he is worthy to be praised. Who woke you up this morning? He did. Who started you on your way? He did. Who gave you the activity? of your limbs who gave your breath in your body who put your mind in the right place he is worthy to be praised oh lord thank you god thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord let us pray this morning father god as we have gather for worship whether virtually or here in the sanctuary father God we thank you for bringing us together for allowing us this day father God we thank you that as we worship we are mindful that it is you you are our reason for worship you are our cause to worship father God you made us able to worship you brought us over the hills. Father God, you were with us through the valleys. You were with us through the trials and tribulations which mark this life. But Father God, you were the sunshine this morning. You caused the sun to shine, Father God. You caused your sun to shine in our lives. Father God, as we worship you, Guide our tongues, guide our hearts. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, because you are our strength and our redeemer. Father God, bless the sick and shut-in of the church. Bless the bereaved of the church. Father God, bless the confused. Bless the tardy, Father God. Bless us all, Father God, from front to back and from side to side. Father God, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for who you are. Because of who you are, we give you glory. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And for his sake, let the saints gathered here and virtually say amen, amen. and amen. you feel better Come on. our morning hymn this morning as we continue in worship blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine I'm an heir of salvation purchased of God born of his spirit, washed in his blood. The chorus says, this is my story. This is my song, praising my savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my savior all the day long. If you can, would you stand please? Jesus. 
Praising my Savior. No matter what the day brings, the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Well, I'm going to be kind to you this morning. I'm going to let you sit. Let, like, like I can stop you <laughs> for the responsible reading. The only thing I ask is that you read it responsibly and energetically as possible. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, all the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Together, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen and amen. Yep. Amen. Well, so you don't have to listen to me any further. <laughs> our responsive reading, or not our responsive reading, our announcements by Deaconess Beverly Moore. Good morning, saints. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Just to um, bring back to your members some of the things that's going on this week. Mondays, 6.30 p.m. And on Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. I'm sorry. Not this Thursday. But not this Thursday. However, this Monday at 6.30, we're asking that you join us in our prayers. Join us in our prayers. I don't think it hurts you. For those in the back, join us in our prayers. For those who may be watching on social media, join us in our prayers. Amen. This coming Tuesday, our young people will be having their Bible enrichment. And we're asking that you have your young people join in with them so they can learn about the Bible on their level. But that doesn't stop you from sitting and joining in with them. You'd be surprised and amazed what you may also learn just from the conversations. On Wednesday at 12 noon and at 6.30 p.m., we will have 
our Sunday School, and our Bible Enrichment Hour. More about Jesus. So join us Wednesdays at 12 noon and at 6.30 p.m. The Mission Department would like to thank all of you who have donated to the Thanksgiving Drive. And if you brought things in today, today is, is the last day. So we thanking you in advance for your generous com contributions. If you notice in the bulletin, we had to kind of update the birthdays and anniversaries. So um, Sister Willis, please asking, please submit even though you've had the same birthday for the last hundred years <laughs> and you may have had the same anniversary for the last hundred years please submit that in, that information don't even start <laughs> please submit your information to sister willa the errors last week please do not charge it to our head it was an honest error and we don't want to make anyone feel that they're not as important. So please submit your information to Sister Wola so we can have correct information and we can honor and recognize you at the appropriate times. Thursday the 24th, which just happens to be Thanksgiving, we're having our, our Thanksgiving service here in the sanctuary, 10 o'clock. And I know the bulletin says one hour, but whatever the Spirit says, that's how long we'll be here. So please join in with us on Thursday, the 24th, at 10 o'clock a.m. That concludes my portion of the announcement. Amen. Amen. How great is our God. How great is our God. He is great and great to be praised. He's so great that the rocks will cry out if you don't. And I don't need any rocks crying out for me. The Lord's been good to us all week. All of our lives. He has kept us yes. from danger seen and unseen. Yes. And he is worthy of the praise this morning. He is worthy of the praise this morning. If you are here this morning, then you've come for worship. Amen. If you're here, then let's worship. Because we have a mighty God to worship. Yes. And he has been good and good and kind to all of us, regardless to what we are, what we have been, God is good and good all the time. Good all the time. Well, the weather's finally changed a little bit. Just get a coat and put it on and a sweater and act like you lived in Buffalo before. Don't act like this is brand new. This ain't brand new. In fact, we're over our limit. It's usually in November, we don't get no 70 degrees and 65 and all of that. So we took it and then enjoyed it. And, and, and we'll enjoy it some more if it happens to come our way. All right. Thank God for you this morning. Uh, make sure that you get your gifts in for the Thanksgiving baskets, your donations quickly. We don't need your money. We need to donate. We need the, they say monetary, but they really need the stuff. The canned goods and all of that great stuff. But whatever you do, do it quickly and do it with kindness and do it out of love. And if you put your name, if you put the name on the slip and pass it in, that would be helpful. Give it to those that are on the committee. And then they'll be able to deal with that. Uh, you can see Sister Banks. Uh, she has been asked to gather names of those who would like a Thanksgiving dinner from the Calvary Baptist Church. 
but you got to give her the name and how many address and all that but you can see her and she'll see that information before the 19th all right and today is the 13th better do it today do it this week if you know of someone who is in need of a of plate can't get out can't have any family in then it would be just nice because Calvary Church is doing that and we just got to get them the name and address all right now I'll see the list so I really don't need to see your name on it no no I can't see your name on it Harold you ain't gonna you ain't, you ain't gonna eat it all. <laughs> give him a pot of beans for the week he's good to go but uh, put put people on there that are in need or can't get around as well that they might be blessed by the church amen, amen. all right all right so please do that and do that quickly by the 19th please pray for Estephine Green she wasn't feeling well this morning good to see mother Stanley here this morning please pray for Diane, uh, Diane her daughter who is in the hospital uh, continue to lift her up before the Lord and Sean wasn't feeling good this week is that what I heard mother so Sean wasn't feeling good. Diane's in the hospital. Mother's still moving on. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But pray for them. Brother Mutri is at home. Robinette is at home. Uh, Sister Linda has had treatment this week. Thank God for her. And ask God to give her strength as she finishes up these last three. Amen. 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 Yeah, finishes up these last three. And uh, she almost looked cute, ain't she? <laughs> oh, well, there's at least one witness in the house. All right, there. there's the main witness in the house. And nobody said it. The, the, the father, husband, granddaddy said it. He can go home today, Jack. Shoot. He might even get him a steak. I don't know. Get one out the freezer or something. Thank God for you. Pray, continue to pray for Janessa and uh, Alicia. And uh, that, that, that family, the Givens, Daniel family, uh, leave none of them out as they go through these times. And remember, it's getting to be Thanksgiving yes. and Christmas. Yes. And that kind of bothers and, can, and bother, can bother and throw you off. So you got to say, Lord, help them through the season. Yes. Because where you're rejoicing, they are not. And there are others who are going through that have it, find it hard through this, this season. So ask God to help them and give them extra strength to deal as they go through. Blessings of the Lord be upon you. Next week, the elders and I will be in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, preaching Elder Greg Spott's 25th pastoral anniversary. Pray for us as we go. Now, I didn't leave you without somebody to preach, and I left you somebody that you like. Reverend Samuel Wesley Harris. All right? Now, Reverend Harris will be, gets out at 1030 at Greater Hope, so whatever we have to do to keep the time going, if we have to take the offering ahead of time, but he'll be here because we're talking five minutes. And I, and I don't usually get up to preach before 10.30, quarter to 11, no way. So he, he'll be in good shape. So kind of watch out for him and uh, pray with him. He's got a lot of responsibility on him. Him and brother Eddie, they got a lot of responsibility with Pastor Ben in the rehab center for the rest of this month. Pastor Blackburn has had an infection in his knee. They've gotten the knee straightened out, but they've got to keep him. Because they can, the medicine is so strong, the nurse has to give it. She has to administer, so they got to keep them. And if you know Pastor Blackburn or my cousin, in one place this long is killing him. So pray for him, killing him. Because he'd have, he'd have been, he would have been all across this country by now. So pray for him, pray for him, pray for him, pray for that family. He just had a birthday. Turned 75 years old. He's the oldest, he's the oldest of our cousins. He's the oldest, he's the firstborn on my mother's side. So do that. All right, come on choir, let's sing to the 
power of the Lord comes down, let's lift up our voices and praise our mighty God. Amen. 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 Beverly, give that to your husband.
Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. He keeps on blessing me. Over and over and over again. And then over some more. Thank God for for the blessings this morning. Lord have mercy. Mm. Just thinking about it just makes you feel warm inside. Have mercy, Lord. He just keeps on blessing me. Over and over and over and over again. Have mercy, Jesus. Aren't you happy this morning that He keeps on blessing us? Oh, that mercy. Then, when you look at the fact that you don't deserve it, the blessings even look better. Because we don't deserve what he has shared and given. Lord have mercy. Mm. 
supply all all according thank you Lord according to his will I have but I shall Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. To go. Lord have mercy. Gave to me to show, to show. Someone mm. and help Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Free, free, free. Like. Have mercy, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Give us this day. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And let's go down to verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there is no God formed, neither shall there be any that shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. 
Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? God at this point in Isaiah had been punishing Israel for their abandonment to him as the only God. Thank God that God is a loving father, one who knows his children. Thank you, Jesus. And even though he does know us and knows that we will turn away in a heartbeat from loving him and doing what he says, that he loves us so much so that he does punish us, but he doesn't punish us to destroy us. He punishes us because he loves us. And because he loves us, we're to show those who have no faith in God that God is real and real and active in our lives. When you look at this text, and it really starts around chapter 42, I will not read all of that because it's just too much. I'll stick in chapter 43 of Isaiah. Isaiah has a favorite literary form, if you read it. He, he likes the courtroom drama. He, he's the Perry Mason of the Old Testament. He's got the parties assembled at verse 8. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Bring them together. Not, not only bring them together, but in verse 9, it says, and, and bring the nations. Because it says, let all the nations be gathered together and let all the, and let the people be assembled. Bring, bring them in to the courthouse so that the issue of one God can be settled. The issue is to settle whether what Yahweh God asserts are either fable or truth. And how can an idol God produce or predict what's going to happen tomorrow? Or what's going to happen right now? So as the proceedings unravel, there's a silence in the room. Because the pretenders show up. Those who pretend to be saved. Those who pretend to be churched. And they show up in large numbers. Because they want to once and for all do away with this one God. Because if you read the text, if you read the Old Testament, there was always an argument between the unsaved and the saved when when the unsaved always believed there was more than one God. Sun God, moon God, this God, rain God. There's always these gods with a small g and an s on the end that they worshipped knowing that God had said, I am the God. When you get to chapter 7, when you get, I'm sorry, when you get to verse 7, God said he created them. It's in the text. For I have created him for my glory, him being Israel. I, I've created them and I created them for my, I, crea I created them. Let's get this straight. While we're having this courtroom battle, let's, let's have the truth. Let's have, let's have an understanding. I, I created them. Not only did I create them, I allowed you, the pretenders, those that are against me, to be in this courtroom at this time. There is no one on the face of the earth that God did not allow 
to be on this earth. Did you hear me? Nobody slipped in. Nobody got under the belt, under the wire. No one has, 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 has done any uh, magical tricks. Everybody, good, bad, up, down, black, white, green, yellow, purple, are here because God has so ordained that they be here. Now what the purpose of their being here is not ours. But know this, he says in verse 7, I created them. And I created them for my glory. Even those unsaved are created for his glory. Every creature, every living thing, everything that's crawling on the ground, flying in the air, were created for his glory. And he, trust me, he's going to get glory out of the wind, out of the, the, the trees, out of the caterpillar. Whatever it is, God's going to get the glory. Because nothing's going to happen that he didn't create. Right. That's right. So when you get to verse 8 and 9, let's break it down. It's going to be helpful for us. When you get to verse 8 and 9, court is assembled. Verse 8 and 9, God calls both Israel and all the nations together in the courtroom scenario. And it's Isaac who takes on the role of a court reporter. He's taking notes. I have created him, verse 7. I have formed you, verse 7. I have made you, verse 8. Bring all them folks here, verse 8. Bring the blind, bring those who have eyes, the deaf, bring them here. And let all the nations, let them come too. And let the people be assembled. And among them can declare this and show us former things. What, what is it that you can declare? Because I'm the one that summoned you here. I'm the one that told you to come. And, and, and what you want to do is, is, is get a group together so that you can try to take away the fact that I am justified in what I do because I am God and God by myself. He doesn't need a justifier. He is the justifier for our soul. But he doesn't need God through Christ Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. Doesn't need anybody to justify them. They are the justifiers. Yes, sir. And let them hear and say it is true. Let them hear what the report's going to be. So that the issue is announced when you get to verse 8 and 9. The issue is announced. Here's the issue. You have but one God. You got the parties in line. You got the blind. You got the deaf. You got the people that are against me. But when you read Isaiah 42, verse 19 and 20, he asked the question, who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind is he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant, see many things, but thou observest not open the ears, but you can't hear. You got eyes to see and can't see. You got eyes to see that he is God and he's God all by himself. You got ears to hear because it's by the preaching of the gospel that men are saying. It's by the hearing and the preaching of the gospel. But you got ears to hear and can't hear. Bring them. Bring them too. Bring them. Lead them down here. Help them to understand that, I, that you're leading them to the, to the courtroom. That lead them down here because there are some things that they can see and hear even though they can, can't see and they can't hear. Because you can have ears and can't hear. Come on, somebody. You got eyes and can't see. He said, bring, bring, lead them down here. Bring them so that they can see and understand that I am God all by myself. And oh, by the way, bring the nations. All of them. Not just my nation, but all the nations. And, 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 and he goes on to verse 9, the little C part of verse 9, and says, Who among them can declare this and show us former things? You see it? What is the this and the former things? References being made to the Exodus experience in Exodus and verse 3, I gave Egypt for your ransom. This and the former refer to the same happening. The redemption of Israel from Egypt was the first and former act of Yahweh for the nation. So he said, I need you to remember when you were in bondage. Let's start there with the court session. 
I need you to remember when I gave my life for a ransom for your soul. I need you to remember that when you were without, I supplied fresh bread in the morning and cool water in the evening. I, I am uh, Yahweh of Israel alone, the, the sovereign God who has purposed that you would go through the suffering of being in Egypt. But I gave Egypt for your ransom. I gave you that what you need to understand that I am omnipotent. And then it goes in verse 9d. So let them bring, I'm just going down the verse. Let them bring down their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. It's one or two things. You either going to say he's lying or he's telling the truth. I got news for you. God is not a liar. He cannot lie. And the only way to understand God is to understand that he's a sovereign God who does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, to whom he wants, and because he wants, because that's who he is. Bring them, he said. Bring those that don't like me. Tell, tell them, come on. Tell them that want other gods to show up. Don't you remember when, when, when Elijah had to, had to deal with, with the masses of people that came and they were going to declare their God? And Elijah said, go ahead, declare your God. Cry all day. Holler, scream, wallow, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. And by the evening time, nothing had happened. Elijah said, well, wait a minute. I, I just don't, let's do this. Douse that wood with some more water. Put some, 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 some pieces around it so they could soak up some more water. Dredge the thing with more water. And then I'm just going to call on God. I, I'm not going to shout. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to run up and down. I'm not going to put all on your head. I'm not going to tell you to speak in an unknown tent language. I'm just going to call on God. The Bible said he just called God. And when he called God, God not only took care of the water, but took care of the wood, took care of the enemy, took care of those that are standing close by. You can't, you, can't, you can't know God and not say that he is the only living God we know. I know there's a lot of little small gods running around. They proved that this week. They're small gods. God is still on the throne by himself. He has not abdicated the throne. He has not given up. He's not turned in his license. He's not given up his credentials. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Now you've got the issue announced. And the only way to, to annul God's sovereign claim is to bring evidence that refutes it. But what can you refute about our God? Now you can tell me you don't believe in him until he changes your heart. But what is it that you can refute about God? Who made the sun? Who made the moon? Who made the stars to be in their silvery socket? And they'll come up with all kinds of scientific knowledge. But let me tell you something. That's idol worship. The truth is, that we've got a God who steadied the course, who broke through silence, made darkness and light appear. He is omnipotent, and he knows how to do what he does because he does all things well. It's so well that it's well with my soul. It is so well that when I woke up this morning, my mind was stayed on him. And so if anything, I can't bring anything that refutes him, I got to talk about it is true. Yeah, yeah. That he is the great I am. Yes, is. It is true. I can't speak for everybody else. And maybe you're trying to figure God out. But I'm here to tell you, he's the truth. Yes, sir. And the light. He is the joy. And he is our peace. How do you know that? Because I've tried him. I, I just dare you to try him. I dare you to call on his name. I dare you to read the word of God and, and find out that he is able to do what he does because it's the truth. He is God. Now, it's not the truth because pastor said it. It's the truth before I was even thought of. It was the truth before there was a when or where. It was the truth when he stood on the platform of nowhere and declared that something would come out of nothing and everything started popping up, lights and darkness and moon and sun, valleys, mountains, because it's the truth. Well, what's the truth? He is God. 
What's the truth? There's no other God before him. But what's the truth? He is the great I am. So when you get to verse 10, he says, Ye are my witnesses, says Yahweh, and my servants whom I have chosen. Now, if nobody else will witness to the fact of God being God, it ought to be those whom he's chosen. The people of God ought to be the first one to say that I know and believe that there is a God. And I know that God is God by himself. And he said, God, to us, that before me there was no God, neither shall there be any after me. So there was none before him, there was none during him, there's none after him. That's the truth. There's not a wannabe, there's not a makeup one, there's not one that tries to look like whatever he thinks God looks like. There is but one God. And the God that I know calls us to tell others that he is our joy. God turns to us as he did to Israel, the people of God, and said, you are my witnesses. I know they got their witness, but, but you are my witness. You're the one that I saved. Remember when I saved you? you you're the one that I brought out of darkness into the mind. You're the one that I put to sleep last night and let sleep all night long and no hurt, harm, or danger. You're the one. You're, you're my witnesses. Are there any witnesses in the house today that's not afraid to say, for God I live and for God I'll die? Uh, 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 is there anyone that's afraid to tell the truth that we serve a holy and everlasting God. They said, well, what do you think about God? Well, I have to tell you what the old folks said. He's all right. Yes, yeah. They said, well, any more to that? No, they said, he's all right. They come back and repeat it. He's all right. And then somebody said, well, what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. I don't know nothing wrong with him because he's done for me greater than I've ever thought about doing for myself. He's done for you when you couldn't do you thought about it and couldn't do it, and God made a way for you. They said no, God said yes. They said yes, God said no. But whatever happens, God, in the truth of the matter, is the God you need to be witnessing about. They said, well, what are we doing with the pandemic? Witnessing about Jesus? What are we doing with our children? Go home and talk about the worship service? Talk about the songs? Talk about the preaching? Talk about the scripture? Talk about the fellowship? What are we doing about Jesus? Telling others that he lives. Yeah, yeah. He's not dead. They said, well, what, what, what's going on with God? Looks like the world's falling apart. I said, baby, don't worry about it. We had nothing to do with the formation of the world. We had nothing to do with God keeping the world. But I do know this. While I'm yet here, yeah. I'm going to praise my Savior all the day long. Yeah. And whatever he decides to do, it's all right. Because yeah. he walks with me. Yeah. And he talks with me. And he yeah. tells me. That I am his own. Whatever he does is all right with me. Yes, now I had to grow up to that. But I saw too many truths happening. Mm -hmm. To verify the fact. That you just got to lean back. On the savior. Right. You just got to fall in his arms. You just got to depend on him. Even when you don't look like you can. God I need some help. Yeah. God I depend and trust in you. I don't, I don't know how this thing's going to work out. But I, I trust in God. He holds my hand. He leads me across the valleys of the shadows of death and tells me, don't fear because I'm with you. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort you. Thou prepares a table before you in the presence. He got it all covered, don't he? Thou anointest my head with all my cup. I got food, I got drink, I got everything. It's running over, surely. Goodness and mercy. He got the whole thing covered. Enemies, food, supplies, trust, everything. I'm here to tell you as a witness that God is our God. And he's worthy to be praised. So you got, you got the issue announced. Then you got the Yahweh's witness. Yahweh's witness is us. But let me tell you something. When you read verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, and my servants whom I have chosen. And this is what's going to happen. That you might know and believe me. Is that text? And understand, believe and know, and then understand that I'm he. And before me there was no God formed, 
neither shall there be after me. So, so I'm going to give my witnesses and I'm going to tell you what to witness. I'm going to tell you what to share because now you got to understand it. I told you I'm him. And I'm going to tell you how I want you to act. I want you to believe on me. I want you to know me. And then I want you to understand me. That I am God and God by myself. I don't think you heard me. I think somebody sleep this morning. I, I, I want you to know who I am. Then I want you to believe for the very fact that I let you know who I am. Then I want you to understand that no matter how dark it is, I got this. And I got you because you are mine. I am yours. And I know that you can't make it without me. So here's, here it is. I belong to God. God is my shepherd. And God said, I want you to know me like you've never known anybody else before. I want you to get close to me. And then I want you to under understand something. I am the Lord God of Israel. I'm your God. I don't care what comes up, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how much your political gain is, I'm your God. I, I'm the God that lets the sun shine on one side and rain on the other at the same time. I, I'm the same God where they said it was going to be snowing so much this morning in Buffalo. I'm the same God that stopped the snow at a certain point. He just put a shield up. He just said no snow there. And then you can cross the street and have eight inches of snow. No snow right across from where I am to Esau is a street. I'm on this side of the street, snow. He's on that side, this close as we are. And there's no snow. You can't tell me there's not a God. You can't tell me there's not a God when your heart is still pumping. No matter how heavy you are, your heart is still pumping. You can't tell me that there's not a God. And you're able to see what a mighty God we serve. You were able to see God in the midst of all the hell I'm going through. I have to confess that you are God all by yourself. And you can do what you do because you do what you do well. And if he does it well, then don't worry because you can be not dismayed. Whatever time God he will take care of you. So, so you got, you got the, 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 the God who calls on them. To be his witnesses. But the implication is. The other group can't. God turns to Israel. The people of God. And says to them. You my witnesses. Right in the courtroom. Right in front of the folks that came to lynch him. Came to get rid of him. God through Christ. Holy Spirit. They all present. Stresses the importance of their role. Also stresses the fact that there is the existence of God in uniqueness, holiness, power, and love. Now when you get to verse 11, there's a Yahweh claim here. I, that's all he had to say right there. And then he comes back and says, even I. I am Yahweh. And... Beside me, there's no Savior. Yes, now, Yahweh is an Old Testament statement. But he talks about a Savior who is a New Testament wording. So he's covering the old. How? About to get happy. He's covering the old Yahweh. I am he. I am that I am. But he's also covering the salvation of life yes, sir. with the Savior. Yeah. So I am God yeah. the Father, yeah. God the Son, yeah. and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So you ain't got to worry about how this thing gonna work. I got it covered in the old and the new. Yes, and whatever's in between, that's why I need you to be my witnesses. Because yes, you know that if it had not been for the Lord, that was on your side. Where would you be this morning? Praise the living God. There's a claim. He said before me. I'm, I'm trying to get out the way. There is no God. Their whole existence. And history. 
was because of the existence of God. I, I love this. Even I. In case you don't understand, he says, I, even I. Nobody talks like that. But God declared, I need to make sure they understand that I, even I, I, I just need you to understand, I am, he tells who he is, Yahweh. And beside me, in case you had the wrong mindset, there's no savior other than me. Israel has enjoyed a unique relationship with God, but you got to be part of the family to understand the I, even I. He has revealed his words to Jacob, his decrees and regulations to Israel. But even they said, who is this? And he says, I am he. So you got an I, even I. Then you got an I am he. Then you got an I am in the text. So Israel, be my witnesses, my chosen people. And in joy that I have given is given because I love you. I need you to know and believe and understand that I am the one true and eternal God. I am that I am. And just in case you're trying to figure it out, just know I'm the being and the work. I am now. And I see that what I give out gets done. Because nothing can get done outside of what God said is going to get done. Can't nothing start till he says start. Can't nothing stop till he says stop. Have you noticed that sometime when you try to stop, God has given you the strength to move on? Anybody else would have stopped, would have given up, would have quit. But you keep going because God gives you what he wants you to have to make it through. Have you ever paid attention to how some folks can take a whole lot of stuff? And some folks can't take a lot of stuff. That's because God gives this person what he needs. And gives this person what they need. And some reason, somehow, he balances that thing out. Because what you can go through, everybody can't go through. And what you've been through, everybody can't be, uh, been through. But that's because you need to witness to those that you're around, baby. I can't tell you how he's going to do it. I just know he can do it. Yeah, yeah. it, 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 it and I'm going to tell you, it is rough. But look at me. I don't look like what I've been through. But I've been through the storm and the rain. But I made it. I've had some rough days and some ups and downs, but I made it. I, I, I walked with a limp, but I made it. I, I had an issue of blood and it dried that up, but I made it. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but I made it. Very deeply stained within, sinking the right, but I made it. But the master, that's how I made it, of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters lifted me. Now say, that's how I made it. I didn't make it with drugs or alcohol or money or others. I made it because he is the joy of my salvation. Hallelujah. Well, we've got the issue announced. We've got Yahweh's witnesses. We've got Yahweh's claim he is. Then we got the account is settled. Did you hear what I said? Go down to verse 12. I have declared... That's a past tense, ain't it? And have saved. That's a past tense. And I have showed. When there, that's past tense. When there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witness, saith the Lord, that I am God. Notice how through this lesson, he keeps talking about he is, I am he. I am, there is none other. Now he's saying, I am God. Verse 12 helps me out because I need to understand who he is. And I need to understand that the account has been de declared settled. They tried to trick it in the courtroom. But he said, I've declared, foretold, have saved and shown, proclaimed, when there was no strange God among you, I was there. I am the heir of your life. That is, what idols can't do, I've done. What water moccasins can't do, I've done. What snakes can't do, I've done. I've declared and have saved and have shown. And when there was no strange God, it's because I was there. So I declared that the truth is that I am the living God. I've saved 
from the house of Israel in Egypt. And I've saved you out of your house. I have shown you, which I proclaim, that I have brought you through the wilderness, through the rivers, through hard times, brought you through people that were trying to destroy you. But here you are. And I need you to understand there's no strange gods among you. I am the only living God. I'm not a foreign deity. I'm not a strange idol. Whatever I said goes. And I want you to witness, saith the Lord, that I am God. I need some witnesses in the morning of Faith Baptist Church to declare he is God. I, I, I need some folks who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ to share out loud that he is God. I need some people who are not afraid to say that the, for God I live and for God I'll die. I need some folks who are not afraid of their title to say, look here, I've got to wave at him because I know that he is the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is. He is the joy of my morning rising and the day go by settling and the night sleeping. And because of this, I witness, Israel, you failed to witness, but I had to remind you in the lesson to witness to the fact that I was before the light because I am the light. I was before the rain because I am the rain. And whatever comes, I need you to understand that there is no one that can deliver you out of the hand of the enemy but me. When the enemy comes against you, I'll be a fence all around you. When things go haywire, I'll be there to calm you down. And so Israel, remember, I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you through the wilderness. I kept you from danger seen and unseen. And I, I just need somebody to say that he is God. I don't know how you feel about it, but he is the Lord. Strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. He is the sovereign God who decided to do what he did. No matter how bad it is, he reaches to the highest mountain and to the deepest depths. And he got such as us. And I need somebody who has a claim on this this morning to act like you're all by yourself. To act like you're in a courtroom and there's a whole lot of folks against you. And say, wait a minute, judge, I've got one thing I've got to say. I know they said that there's other gods and they, and they said that this God is not our God. I, I know I might be by myself, but I just want to stand up and tell you that I trust in God. I, that I know God for myself and I don't care what they say, I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the joy of my salvation. I, I don't know what they say. But I'm telling you, he's the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is. He's the joy of my... I don't know how they feel, but I feel pretty good about telling you that he is a rock in a weary land and shelter in the time of storm. And he's the lily of the valley in the bright and the morning. I don't mind telling you today that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ on Christ on Christ on Christ on Christ on Christ the solid rock I stand no other ground is sinking sand is there any witnesses in here? Has he been good to you? Has he made a way for you? Has he brought you out? Has he kept you while you're out? Somebody ought to say thank you. Somebody ought to say thank you. Somebody ought to lift up hands and say thank you. He's good, thank you. He's wonderful, thank you. He's joy, thank you. He's God, thank you. He is Jesus, thank you. He's the Holy Ghost, thank you. He's able, he's able. He's able. 
Is he able? Is he able? Is he able? Won't he do it for you? He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's an able God. I can't figure him out, but he's able. I can't, you can't figure God out. God makes doors where there ain't no doors. God opens doors where there's no door to be open. God makes a way for you all to go places and you looked at your account the other week and said, I can't even go to the grocery store good. And God opens the door and you get to go somewhere. You need to say, Lord, I know you've been good to me. I know, I know we done been in the store and I know we done said, Lord, this is ridiculous. The prices are crazy. But you know what I draw in? When I get to the cash register and I got enough money, Sister Wingo, to be able to buy, even though it's outrageous, and they ought to know better, they ought to do better, they, they ought to stop playing with folks' lives like that. But have you noticed God has not let you go hungry? You may not be able to fill up your car with $40 or $60, but you might get a half a tank, and that half a tank will go and take you as long as if you had a half a tank because God knows how to stretch stuff. Yes, oh, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. But I'm a witness. I am a witness. I am a certified witness that God can take whatever you have and stretch it and make it cover end to end. You ought to witness that. You ought to witness that. Say, well, I, I have money. Well, thank God for you. Thank God for you. But that's not my point. My point is that God can stretch whatever it is. Not only can he stretch, but he can cover. I'm, try I'm through. I'm that was one of my last points. He can cover. Can't nobody cover you like God. Can't nobody cover. I've told this. I'm through. I won't, I won't stretch it out. Have bad nightmares, little kid growing up. Y'all, y'all ever had him? Y'all had no bad nightmares. Mm -hmm. Grandma said, "Cause you was bad." <laughs> she was right. She was right. She was right. Absolutely. And I had them bad dreams and be always, always running and 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 never, never, you know, get get to the edge and you gonna fall off and you, of course you wake up or something. Be scream up, screaming and hollering. And, and grandma would come in there and just hover over you. Straighten out your bed because you, you're having a nightmare so you probably don't kick the covers. And they straighten out the bed, kind of move the pillow around. You still sleep. But as I grew up, I understood that there was a presence in the room. You'll get this on the way home. And what the presence was at that time in our lives was grandma. But now when I think about it, it was God. Yes, yes, yes. How many times have you gone to bed and left something on and God won't let you sleep? <laughs> you thought you turned the pot off. You thought you turned the water off. And you can't, you can't get settled in the bed. You're in the bed. You're tired. You done put the jam jams on. Turn the TV off. You ready to go to sleep? I got to get up. I got to get up. What? And you're not thinking. And God has you to wake up sure. because the pot on. He's covering you. Hallelujah. He's covering you. Granddaughter had an accident the other day. Mimi had an accident uh, with, a, with a deer. Thank God that she didn't get hurt. Amen. She said, Granddaddy, all I could see was the hoof of that thing coming through the window. I said, what did you do? She said, I just leaned over. I said, no, you just didn't lean over. God pushed you over. And the reason I said that, she said, Granddaddy, she said, I said, the reason I said it that way is because I would want you to know that even though you didn't get hurt, you could have. Yeah. And God kept you. You can get another car. And she didn't get hurt at all. The top of the hood is messed up. But, but I said, don't, don't even worry about that. Cars are made to be broken. We're talking about your life. Covered. God has covered you. Hallelujah. And you ought to be his witness. Mm -hmm.
got you covered. The door of the church is open. I can come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism, covered. Be his witness. Be his witness. Be his witness. Be his witness. Stand where you are. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, you're welcome to come and be a part of the Faith Missionary Baptist Church where we extend to you the privilege of the church to come to Christ as Savior and Redeemer. Be his witness. God is able, I tell you. He's been good. Come to him. God has, God has, God has, God has, God has. Smile. You may be seated. You may be seated. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank thee again for the worship. We thank you for the privilege to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that as we go that you would bless and keep us, that you would hold us in the palm of your hand. For we exalt you, we praise you, we magnify you. In all things we give thanks. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.